the Launchpad Pro Session Mode, the correlation with Ableton Live Session View, Clip Functions, Track Controls, Record Arm, and Recording, and Momentary View Switching. All of this and more are coming up right now on this episode of Pro Music Creator. This video is the third in a series of videos covering all of the features of the Launchpad Pro Mark III. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Ramirez and this is Pro Music Creator, where we all become pros at producing and making music together. Hopefully by the end of this video series, we'll all be pros at the art of using the Novation Launchpad Pro Mark III to create, produce, and perform music. So if you wish to learn everything there is to know about the Novation Launchpad Pro, stay tuned by subscribing to this channel and turning on the notifications so you'll be alerted each time I post a new video in this series. Session mode allows you to control Ableton's live session view. If you've used session view in Ableton Live, you're probably familiar with the grid of clips. Logic Pro has a similar view with its live loops view. In Ableton Live, you're presented with a series of clips organized into tracks and scenes. The tracks are the vertical columns you see and the scenes are the horizontal rows. Clips are the loops that contain MIDI notes or audio. Tracks are one of two things. One, they can be virtual instruments you assign to play your MIDI notes. Or two, they can be audio tracks used to hold recorded audio waveforms produced from live instruments or your voice via a microphone. Scenes are made up of clips assigned to the same row as the scene. If you launch a scene, you are essentially launching all of the clips on that row at the same time. This allows you to create rows of clips for different parts of your song and then launch the entire scene when needed. For example, you can have one scene of clips for the intro and then another for the verse and yet another scene for the chorus. One click launches the entire set of clips associated with the scene. Again, Logic Pro Live loops works very similar. There's a lot more to be said about the session view, but a comprehensive discussion of Ableton session view is beyond the scope of this video. I am considering a complete Ableton Live free course as well. If you are interested, just let me know in the comments below so I can gauge whether it's worth doing it. You place the Launchpad Pro into session mode by pressing and releasing the session button. You'll notice that the Launchpad Pro matches Ableton Live's session view with its 8x8 grid. Each button in the grid corresponds to a clip in Live. That's a total of 64 clips that can be accessed with a single button on the Launchpad. If you have more than 64 clips in Live, Launchpad can navigate them in two different ways. First, by pressing and holding the Session button while in Session mode. This changes the colors on the Launchpad's grid to reflect the number of pages in Live. For example, if you have 16 tracks across Live, Launchpad shows two pads lit up for you. If you press one of those pads, Launchpad directs Live to go to that set of tracks. Same if you happen to have more than eight scenes. Using this method, you can easily jump around in Live. The banks of clips you're currently viewing will be displayed on the Launchpad in a dimmed white color. The others will be light blue. If any clips 
are playing in a bank currently out of view, the block will be pulsing in green. The second method is by using the navigational arrow buttons in Live. These allow you to move across the banks of clips scrolling the rows one scene at a time or tracks one track at a time. While session view is the topic, let's go over the session record button marked by the circle on the Launchpad Pro. If you press the record arm button, you tell Ableton Live you want to record on the current clip. Suppose you press the session record button while the clip is playing back whatever has been recorded. In that case, you enable overdub recording, which allows you to add more notes to the current clip. The session record button has a secondary function accessible via the shift button. If you press and hold the shift button and then press the button marked with the circle, you access what's called the capture MIDI functionality, which is also labeled on that button. Let me explain what this functionality does. A great feature of Ableton Live is that it is always listening for MIDI messages coming in. Let's say you have a clip currently playing and the track is record enabled. You might audition a few things you'd like to record and you hear something you wish you had captured. Well, no fear, just hit the capture MIDI button and Ableton Live captures what you played in the clip currently playing as if you had overdubbed it. What's that you say? Ableton Live wasn't playing a clip. Well, it's got you covered there too. It'll simply capture the stuff you were playing into the new clip on that track. Cool, huh? Let's also cover the play button, which is marked with a sideways triangle symbol. This button plays the currently active clips if they are stopped. If you press it while the clips are playing, it will stop those clips. Notice the clips will remain active though. Pressing play again will re-engage those active clips. Now, let's go over some details regarding how we work with the clips on the Launchpad Pro. But before we do that, if you're finding some value in this video, it would absolutely help out the channel if you could click the like button. Your support is much appreciated and it goes a long way towards helping and sharing this content with others. As you probably can tell, a lot of work goes into making these types of informative videos. So I would absolutely appreciate it if you would help me out. Now let's get down to the list of functions. Let's start with the clip selection. With a cell press, you can hear the recorded clip associated with that cell and the colors on the screen and the pads will match. The pad flashes green when you press it. That means the clip is cued and about to start playing. You can only play one clip per track at a time, but don't worry. If you want to stop the clip, just press an empty clip on the same track and the current one will stop. And of course, you can take your musical exploration even further with scenes. Just use the scene launch buttons on the right hand side of the Launchpad Pro and you're good to go. If you press the shift button plus one of the cells in Launchpad's grid, you select that cell in Ableton Live without launching it. This also works for empty cells. Later in this series, we'll cover the sequence of functionality, which allows you to independently record cells without using even a computer. You can later select a cell in Ableton Live and print the captured sequencer MIDI data into Ableton Live. To delete a clip from the session view grid, press and keep the clear buttons held down, and then press the corresponding clip on the 8x8 grid. In note mode, merely pressing the clear button will instantly erase the currently chosen clip. When you press and hold the duplicate button and click a clip in the 8x8 grid, the clip will be copied to the clip underneath it replacing any existing clip that was already there. If you are in note mode, pressing the duplicate button will instantly duplicate the chosen clip and select the replicated version. This is beneficial if you need to create a new clip based on a prior one. 
The double function can be used to extend the duration of a clip. For example, a clip of two bars can be stretched to four bars. In session mode, while holding the shift and duplicate buttons, press on a pad to double the length of the clip. Alternatively, when a clip is playing in note or device mode, pressing the duplicate button while keeping the shift button pressed will double the clip's length. Finally, when in note mode, a single press of the double button will instantly double the duration of the selected clip, which can be very handy when creating a variation of a loop that you want to overdub. To apply quantization to a clip on the 8x8 grid, press and hold the quantize button and then click the clip. This will cause the MIDI notes to be shifted to the closest 16th note alignment. Upon pressing the record arm button, the track buttons become switches that allow you to record on the chosen track. This allows you to monitor what you play on the MIDI controller and hear whatever you play on the controller. And for audio tracks, you hear whatever is coming from the analog sauce, such as the microphone used for a singer, guitar, drums, and so on. By selecting a single track, it will be enabled and the rest will be disabled. To put it another way, only one track can be switched to record arm at a time. When a track is ready to record, the empty clips in its column will appear in a faintly red hue. If a clip is selected, it will flash red and the record button will also blink, which indicates that it is cued for recording. The pad will emit a pulsing red light when recording begins, and the record button will remain lit in a bright red color. If the record button is then hit again, the clip will flash red to signify that the recording will soon end. If the track is unarmed while the recording process is active, the clip will immediately cease recording. When the mute button is pressed, the track buttons become toggles that mute the selected tracks. By default, none of the tracks are selected, which means you can hear all of the tracks. However, once you press the mute button and select one or more of those tracks, those tracks become disabled. Notice that the track lights become very dim. When the solo button is selected, the tracks are converted into switches, which permit you to solo the chosen track. This means that the designated track will be audible and the other tracks will be silenced. It is not possible for more than one track to be soloed simultaneously. In other words, only one track can be changed to solo mode. Before we discuss the volume, pan, sends, and device button, let's discuss how you should hit that like button. Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, now let's discuss how the values are arranged across the pads. The volume, pan, sends, and device controls each have eight sliders. The sliders for volume, sends, and device are arranged vertically, while those for pan are laid out horizontally. Pushing a pad will adjust the slider position either up or down or left or right, depending on the fader type. You can also slide your finger across a set of pads to cause the value to increase or decrease at a smooth and steady rate. Tracks are laid out horizontally on the pads for volume and send sliders and vertically for pan faders. Control the volume levels of the tracks within the 8x8 area in session view by first selecting the volume button and then moving your finger vertically across the pads. Move your finger up to raise the volume and then down to lower the volume. If you have more than eight tracks, press the left and right buttons to pan back and forth between the groups of tracks. Control the stereo panning of the tracks within the currently selected eight by eight area in the session view by first selecting the pan button and then moving your finger horizontally across the pads. Move your finger 
left to move the stereo image towards the left speaker or right to move the stereo image towards the right speaker. If you have more than eight tracks, press the left or right buttons to pan back and forth between the groups of tracks. Notice that the pads will change colors to match the color you set for the track inside of Ableton Live. Control the amount of sound that is sent to your return tracks for any of the tracks within the currently selected 8x8 area in session view by first selecting the sends button and then moving your finger vertically across the pads. By default, the value of each track is zero, which means no sound is sent to the return track for any of the tracks. Move your finger up to raise the amount or down to lower the amount. If you have more than eight tracks, press the left or right buttons to pan back and forth between the groups of tracks. Note that the scene buttons change to reflect the sends. By default, each track typically is created with two returns, AKA sends. If you add more return tracks, you are essentially adding more sends. The scene buttons on the right will be lit to reflect the sends. If you have two sends, then two scene buttons will be lit. If you have three, then three buttons will be lit, and so on. You will need to select from send A to the total number of sends you currently have using the scene buttons first, before you can control the amount of sound that will be sent to that return track. Upon pressing the device button, the track select button above the mixer function buttons allow you to control the devices assigned to the tracks. The launch pad shows eight currently visible tracks from Ableton Live. You'll have to pan around first to view the eight tracks you wish to control before you press the device button. Once the device in the chain is selected, you control the value of the eight macro parameters within the selected device of the chosen track. The buttons become faders for each of the eight parameters. You can control more than eight parameters by switching between parameter groups using the scene buttons, which you'll notice have now changed colors to reflect their functionality. The left and right arrows allow you to switch between devices for the selected track. When the stop clip button is pressed, the track buttons become stop clip buttons that can stop the corresponding clip within the track at the end of the phrase when they are pressed. Next, let's cover the production controls. To undo your last action, press and hold the shift button and then press the record arm button. If you need to undo the action prior to that, repeat this action again and so forth. To reverse the most recent undone action, press and hold the shift button and immediately press the mute button. To set the tempo to your desired rate, hold down the shift button and press the sends button multiple times. To switch between activating and deactivating Ableton Live's click functions, press and hold the shift button while also pressing the solo button. Before we end this session today, I want to discuss the momentary view switching. It is advantageous to be able to switch between views in session mode quickly, especially when performing live. For instance, if you are looking at track mutes and need to quickly adjust the volume fader, hold down the volume button and make the desired changes and then lift the volume button to go back to viewing mutes. The content in this video only touches the surface of what the Launchpad Pro can do. I'll cover note mode next. So if you don't want to miss the remaining videos in this series, make sure you click that like button, share this content with all of your friends, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications so you won't miss any future videos. Thanks and see you next time.